Okay, good evening. It's 6.30 p.m. on August 10th, 2023. I call the Zoning Board of Appeals hybrid meeting to order. Um, members joining remotely, I'll start with a roll call. Um, David, if you would like to start. David Potter, remote, present. Gabby Richard Harrington, remote. President. Okay. I'm going to have to try to touch the uh, TV screen here because there's a warning up on it. Uh, Laura Pontani, remote present. But I find myself. Okay, Dave, if you want to. I'm here, present. Yes. All right. <clears throat> There's a roll call. Okay, we have minutes from March 27th, 2023. Anybody have any questions on the minutes? Okay, I'll take I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from March 27th, 2023. So moved. David Potter. Okay. All those in favor, I'll have to do a roll call. I'll start with Dave Sharp, who's in here. Um, I wasn't present, but if that's okay, I'll approve it. Yeah. Okay. Dave Potter? David Potter, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, Gabby? Gabby Richard Harrington, yes. Okay. And Laura? Um, I'm new to the board. I don't know if you want me to vote. I wasn't there or... I don't think I was signed in yet. That, that's fine. You can abstain if you'd like for the record. I think I just because I don't know anything about it. <laughs> abstain. All right. Um, next item, uh, introduction for new members. So Laura, if you can give a brief introduction. Okay, um, thank you. Um, I'm Laura. I've been living in this area, Western Mass, since 2010. Um, I have been living uh, at Graves on Graves Street since, I think it was September of 2015. Um, I am a local area psychotherapist and have um, had an existing practice in South Deerfield before the pandemic, and now I'm stationed in Northampton, but I'm hoping to get back up here in South Deerfield. Um, I have two children, um, one of which attends um, Deerfield Elementary School, and my daughter is out of district. Um, but that's about it. I'm really happy to be here, I'm hoping to learn a lot about what you guys all do, probably need some extra support on all that, but everything, and I'm looking forward to seeing what tonight looks like. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't know if whoever's running the meeting can maybe turn the volume down a little bit out here. Um, not sure you're, if that's possible. And so, Unfortunately, uh, I have no control over that. Okay. All right. It'll be fine. Uh, so we still have an open position. Um, thank you, Laura, for however you were decided to volunteer or what the situation was. Um, and everybody else that volunteers for the town. I'd just like to take a moment to 
recognize uh, two former members, uh, Robert Decker III, who um, is no longer with us. Uh, he was willing to serve, but he was not reappointed, and he had about 20 years of experience here. And Alex Hershenretter, who also was willing to serve, um, but again, also was not reappointed. Um, I would like to thank Alex for doing a great job on the minutes, running our Zooms, and all the things that he kindly does for the town. And he was a wonderful member of the board, and both of them will be missed. So with that being said, we have uh, some people in front of us that would like to possibly make a presentation uh, for a public hearing. Um, so I'm going to open the public hearing for a special permit and a variance application filed by Foreign Inc. for property located at number 10 Greenfield Road, a map 175 lot six for a research laboratory and manufacturing facility that cannot meet the performance standards of section 4900 in a district as provided for the zoning bylaw 179, section 2230 and a variance for bylaw section 179, 4131. Good evening. Come on up to the table. Feel free to bring chairs if you have guests or anybody uh, that needs to be remote. We can facilitate that for you. Good evening. Good evening. Nice to see everyone both here and remotely. Um, I was actually in this this same room presenting to the planning board uh, a little bit earlier. So uh, hopefully everything goes smooth this time as well with the, the props and everything. Um, how I did it last time was just uh, shared into the, the Zoom and then shared my screen mm -hmm. um, to give a little presentation. Is that okay? It's fine. Just for the members of the public, if you're here for a public comment, we'll uh, hear the hearing first, and then we'll open up for public comment or questions, okay? And you are Alex, correct? Or not? Alex Nichols, yes. Alex, okay. One of the co-founders and the chief engineer at Florent. Okay. All right. Can everyone uh, see my screen? Yes. Fantastic. So I just like to give a little bit of an overview of who we are at Florent and, and what we do. Um, then uh, a little bit of our thought on the, the special permit overview and timing, uh, and then talk a little bit about phase one overview and timing. So as you mentioned tonight, we'd like to discuss both a special permit for a research facility, uh, as well as in the future manufacturing facility, However, at this time, we're only seeking that special permit for a research facility as part of our phase one, which as I'll talk to a little bit later in the presentation is going to last for nine to 18 months from permit grant date, at which time we would like to come back before the planning board and the zoning board of appeals and uh, seek a, a permit for a manufacturing facility, which does not meet the specifications of section 4900. Uh, that being said, um, the special cases of Section 4900 are all met um, by the research facility that we're planning. Uh, the only variance uh, we're seeking is from Section 4131 around gas emissions, uh, which I'm happy to speak to later on in the presentation as well. Okay, sir, go ahead. So very briefly, um, my name is Alex Nichols, again, uh, one of the founders. Um, uh, not with us tonight are Jose LaSalle, uh, founder and CEO, uh, and Joe Hastry, um, founder, COO, CFO, uh, 
all three of us um, actually went to UMass less than 10 years ago, uh, and we liked it a lot out here. So I so uh, figured it was a good place to start the company. But right now, we actually have R&D laboratory space uh, at UMass Amherst um, that we're quickly outgrowing. OK. Just to give you a quick overview, our mission is really to contribute to a greener world and to enable a clean energy transition. And the way we think about doing that is really changing the energy storage landscape for the better. Right. You're hitting the nail on the head. Storage is the big issue, not generation. Yeah, we think so. And uh, one, one big part of, of storage is actually high power delivery. That's where a technology called supercapacitors really comes in. Uh, today's supercapacitors are good, but they could be better. Uh, and the best way to improve supercapacitor performance, particularly on the energy side, is with the core active material for supercapacitors, something called activated carbon. If you can make better supercapacitors, then renewables firming becomes easier. So smoothing out high power events, high power transients that are problematic on the generation side for wind and solar and problematic on the consumption side for things like electrifying buildings, EVs and EP charging infrastructure. So what is activated carbon? Uh, you might be familiar with it as just a product that goes into a Brita filter. There are also about two kilograms of activated carbon in every internal combustion engine vehicle on the road. And those two applications are respectively primarily made using coconut husk and coal, mine right here in the US. But there's a better way. And that is taking waste biomass created right here in the US and turning that into a high value activated carbon product, while at the same time sequestering the carbon from that waste biomass that would other go back, otherwise go back into the air as atmospheric carbon dioxide. So in our case, we like to use hemp herd, uh, currently a waste product from a very fast growing plant that is very localizable, uh, considerably better than coconut husk, which itself is considerably better than coal, considering that, well, coconut husks come from coconuts, which don't grow here. And Coal is already sequestered carbon, so we think we should probably leave it in the ground. Just to give you a little bit of background on the Lawrence Advantage. Um, any questions from any members of the board before I proceed here to talking a little bit more nitty gritty about our proposed permit phasing? Everybody's shaking their head no, I'm, I understand what you're saying. Awesome. So as I mentioned before, uh, we are proposing a, a two-phase approach here. Uh, the first one would be for a research laboratory, research facility, uh, language we are, are pattern matching um, directly from the, the Deerfield Town bylaws, but which we also fall neatly inside of. Um, so we think this is the best designation for what we're trying to do. Um, again, that's nine to 18 months from permit grant date, and depending on how research goes, uh, obviously part, the least deterministic part of any company's phasing and build out. And just to speak about special permit considerations there. So uh, gas emissions, this is actually part of a, a variance that we spoke to the planning board uh, about on Monday. Um, so we would actually be, when we create activated carbon from biomass uh, pyrolyzing or um, burning in a controlled way that biomass to create a high value activated carbon product. Uh, that pyrolysis releases CO2 among other gases, um, although it's arguably the most troubling one. Um, and that's at a rate of about two kilograms per hour. Uh, this would be intermittent operation. So between six to 10 hours per week of, of operation at, at this level of gas emissions. Uh, when it comes to other considerations uh, for Section 4900, um, we would not be operating the facility 24-7. Uh, hazmat storage would be kept to less than uh, 50 kilograms of chemical inputs uh, qualified as hazardous. Uh, and finally, uh, waste storage would be less than 5 kilograms at any given time. 
When taking a look at phase two, the pilot manufacturing facility, uh, this would be producing around uh, well, about 100 to 500 tons per year of activated carbon product. Uh, this would, on a continuous basis, release about 20 kilograms of, of CO2 per hour of operation, uh, would be operating 24-7. Um, when it comes to hazmat storage, uh, less than 1,000 kilograms of chemical inputs would be kept on site at any given time, uh, which would qualify Florent for small quantity generator status under EPA and Mass DEP regulations. Uh, and at the same time, there'd be less than 100 kilograms of hazardous waste kept on site at any given time. Uh, an important thing to note about the process we'll be running is we actually um, turn corrosive inputs into salt brines uh, at the output of the process. So uh, non-flammable, non-hazardous. You just make, make sure that you uh, didn't dump them into a, a nearby river, but there are um, various folks that we could actually sell the, the brines to as an input to their processes. And this would last through at least April 2026, uh, we have a three-year lease uh, at 10 Greenfield Road right now, uh, though we would be very interested if pilot manufacturing is going well in extending that lease and potentially at the end of 2024, taking over uh, 6,500 square feet uh, directly adjacent um, to our current manufacturing facility that's just behind a demising wall. So during our planning board meeting, we got some great questions, um, particularly around gas emissions uh, that I would love to, to speak to right now. Um, so in terms of the, uh, the research facility, um, during intermittent operation, the composition of the effluent gas stream coming out of the facility would be around 13% carbon dioxide, 70% nitrogen, and 70% water vapor, uh, just to anchor these CO2 emissions. Um, so at research scale, uh, about two kilograms per hour. Um, compare this to around 10 kilograms per hour from a large microbrewery ferment. So uh, I, I actually learned a lot about microbreweries, um, kind of uh, putting this comparison together. It turns out that if you are below 15,000 barrels of beer produced a year, then you're considered a microbrewery. And if you're right below that limit, then you would emit around 10 kilograms of CO2 per hour um, to, to hit that annual usage figure, uh, meaning that the 20 kilograms per hour uh, continuous operation would be very comparable to uh, the hourly output of a, a small craft brewery. Um, so something about 15,000 barrels of beer per year. You're not going to tell us to stop drinking our beer, are you? Never. No. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know how many barrels they make at BBC, but they make a lot more barrels at BBC than they actually make at Treehouse. I think they only make one barrel there a year. Yeah. Really? Yeah, they make 99.9% .9 of their beer in Charlton. They just serve it here. Wow, they could have fooled me. Absolutely. A lot of cans on the walls there, at least. Absolutely. They they make uh, just a small batch there to meet their licensing requirements. Interesting. Wow, the more you know. Huh? The more you know. They, were, they presented it through their hearing when we granted them their license. So they're all up and we're happy to have all business here in town. So hopefully you can make yours work for you. I hope so as well. So just wanna give a, a brief overview of the research laboratory floor plan. So I think we distributed all these materials to folks. Um, this is gonna be fairly small on the screen. So happy to zoom into various sections here, but in the upper right corner, you can see the main part of the facility. It's about 5,500 square feet where research would mostly be conducted. Uh, and then we divide up other parts of the research facility into various zones, including biomass storage, um, chemical storage and satellite accumulation uh, of hazardous waste, uh, generalized inventory storage, uh, and then from a safety perspective, uh, inclusion of a drench shower and eye wash station over here. So zooming in on the research facility, um, we have here two tube furnaces 
these would be underneath a ventilation hood um, with a, a curtain purge and, and sprinkler head brought down into them. We do need to add makeup air and ventilation uh, to upgrade this space for occupancy. So actually, formally, despite the fact that this used to be um, uh, an F1 facility under IBC code for plastics manufacturing, um, this particular part of it was actually only ever uh, outfitted for warehousing, which was its use prior to, to Florence lease. Um, so we do need to upgrade it for occupancy. Are you going to have any external uh, changes to the building? Yes, we anticipate adding a, a stack for a gas effluent out of the process. Okay, you know, we do have height requirement. And I didn't see that specifically outlined here on your... Uh, the, the stack would likely not go above the top of the, the building as it exists currently. Okay, just check with the building inspector about that specific. You might need to come back to that. Yes, absolutely. Um, so if that's, the, so that's a phase two thing or that's a phase one? That's a phase one thing. Uh, so right now the side of the building is at 14 feet and the center of the building is at 18 feet. Uh, the, the stack itself would... Would, um, we would like to have it go slightly above the 14 foot part of the building, but not exceed the height of the 18 foot part of the building. Okay. I'm not saying that. I just, I'm just asking because I don't want you to erect one and then the building inspector say no can do. Definitely. And we'll, uh, we'll be in close contact with them for that okay. process. With regards to the rest of the, the research facility floor plan, um, we have some fume hoods, uh, a flammables cabinet, uh, as well as a, a few lab benches. So fairly standard fare. Moving to the, the bottom part of the initial illustration, you can see again, we have um, dry base bulk storage. Uh, that's a, a dry corrosive input noted in our proposed chemical inventory plan, uh, as well as uh, hazardous waste storage um, in the satellite accumulation area. Uh, generalized inventory storage here, and then a little bit of zoom in on both our drench shower and eyewash station here, uh, adjacent to the bathroom where the tempered water supply is already available, uh, as well as biomass storage in what is notionally the upper left corner of the facility as it exists in the drawings that we distributed. And I'll, I'll pause here for any additional questions. Mr. Shea. I don't have any, no, enjoying the show. I have a couple of questions. Uh, yes. Uh, the furnaces, are those things you're bringing from Amherst and you're currently using those? That's correct. And um, the hazardous waste, what exactly is the hazardous waste and what kind of a hazard does it cause if it were to get out? So the hazardous waste in this case would be salt brines. Okay. Sorry. And so that would be a hazard if it got into our groundwater or rivers or, but it's not hazardous to humans directly. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. Um, salt rinds? Salt brine, yeah. So a very, brine. Okay. very concentrated salt yeah. solution. Okay. I, I wouldn't drink it. It would be a little bit too much salt for you to handle. Yeah. But It's weird how you think of it as a hazard, but they dump it on the road as soon as a snowflake flies. Right. Right. Yeah, right. Um, and in, in Amherst currently, are you just doing the research or are you also doing the manufacturing? So in this facility, we would not be doing any manufacturing. But are you currently in Amherst doing both? No, we are not doing any manufacturing in Amherst. Um, we're operating out of a, a, a UMass Amherst campus research laboratory. And my last question is the CO2, is there an odor or is there noise to producing this stuff 24 hours a day? Uh, so there, there will be no odor and uh, no noise associated with production of the, the CO2 or any other part of the effluent gas. And lastly, we had a famous 
inventor here in town, one of the Wolframs, who invented a furnace that was so hot that there was they could burn tires in it and there was no leftover product whatsoever, but he couldn't patent it because he couldn't find a thermometer that measured how hot it got. Do you know anything about those furnaces and might that prevent you from having any kind of waste? Thank you for that story. I, I'm actually not familiar with uh, with this kind of furnace. Um, that being said, uh, that is actually our strategy as well to burn everything hot enough that we aren't creating any sort of volatile organic compounds uh, that come out of the stack. Uh, if you burn everything, oh, I would hot love a commitment then to ask some of the local Wolfram descendants if they still have any of that and look into that. I'm very curious to look into that. Okay, thank you. No more questions. Uh, I actually have a question for you, um, which is how do you spell Wolfram? W-O-L-F-R-A-M, like Wolfram Alpha. It's the same family. Really? I yes. use Wolfram Alpha all the time. There are a lot of locals who teach science in the local schools and engineering and whatnot, and they all seem to have the same gene makeup. And there's at least one still living in Southfield. David, uh, online or Laura, do you have any questions for the uh, gentleman here? Okay. Um, I'm just curious, what's the fuel for these furnaces that are going to go so hot? Uh, we power them electrically. So it's a, it's a resistance heating coil technology. In this case, just passing current through a piece of metal until it gets to around 800 degrees Celsius. Okay, um, I'm going to uh, ask any uh, members of the public um, that would like to ask a question, just identify yourself and ask uh, if you have any questions. Okay, no questions from the audience. Um, so I'm inclined. So to to uh, move forward with your application. I think your narrative here um, presents itself well enough um, that we would, would I would, I can't speak for anybody else that I would vote in favor of giving you the relief and the special permit that you're asking for, but I would wanna make sure that you're up um, okay with some conditions uh, to the permit. Uh, I would like to condition uh, the permit that you have 24 uh, seven contact information available to the town hall and to the fire department. Um, I would like to make sure that you have, um, that we require that you have a yearly uh, fire department hazardous materials technician inspection as the fire chief uh, deems that he needs to. If he says he wants to waive an inspection after your second or third year of business, that's uh, up to him. But I want it in our permit that in order for you to operate your business that the fire department can go in there and inspect uh, at least annually um, as, as needed. Um, and if they request to have some, a type of drill, um, you have to facilitate that. Um, it would require as part of our permit that you follow all local, state, and federal regulations. Um, <clears throat> and that this is would be a special permit for phase one only, not as phase two, you'll come back. And that this permit is not transferable. So that in the event that you find something special and somebody else wants to invest and buy you out a larger company, that they would have to come here, your permit for operating in that space would not be valid. It's only gonna be issued to to, the, to your group. Um, are those conditions that you and your group would be okay with? You don't have to answer that now. We can continue it to another hearing, another date. It's up to you. But those would be conditions that I would like to see as part of the permit and the other board members have the ability to ask for conditions as well. I can speak on behalf of Florent when I say these conditions feel very fair. I don't have any questions or concerns. Um, Alex, I'll add that the inventor of the original, whatever kind of furnace it was, is Norm, Norman Wolfram. 
Thank you, Gabby. We just want to check and make sure we didn't receive anything else here online. Okay, so this is, I just wanted to double check. In addition, um, the fire department has requested, and I would have this condition that uh, safety plan for any of your chemicals that are water reactive, how they may be protected in the event of a fire and a sprinkler activation and applicable mass general law fire codes would apply to any permits as necessary. So we, we got Kurt's comment earlier today, actually. Okay. Uh, and sent over some preliminary information. Uh, it's not an SLP for the facility because we haven't received the permit yet. I understand. Um, would you like me to, to speak a little bit to, to Kurt's question? Um, you can. I would just say that as far as conditions are concerned, I would say that you know, that would be part of the conditions that the safety plan would be approved by the fire chief or his designee or her designee, mm -hmm. um, including that safety plan for anything that's reactive to water. But you can speak to that. Go ahead. Absolutely. Um, I'll keep this brief. Uh, we don't have any chemicals that are uh, directly reactive with water. Um, the, the potassium hydroxide, the dry base, uh, when combined with water is in it's called an exothermic reaction, so it does release some heat. Uh, we won't be storing this in uh, in quantities that um, trigger any sort of uh, permit or, or license necessitated by the state um, in terms of any permits. Uh, the only one we need is, uh, speaking with Kurt actually, about um, a, uh, a permit for storing uh, less than 793 gallons of class one flammable liquids uh, as per CMR 1.12.8.50. Um, okay. So fairly cut and dry. Okay. I, I still think as what, what I read off for conditions earlier would cover that safety plan uh, inspection annual if the fire chief deems necessary. And if they need to have like some type of drill or training for their people that you facilitate that. Absolutely. I have another question. What will you do to remove that hazardous waste when you have more than you can store? And is there any use for it? That is a great question. So uh, Mass DEP uh, provides uh, a list of EHNS um, hazmat removal providers. Uh, the closest one to South Deerfield is in West Brookfield, Massachusetts. Uh, there are also some in, in Pittsfield and, and Worcester. Uh, if that first closest one doesn't work out. Uh, at, at this scale of production, uh, we likely won't be producing those salt brines in enough volume or with enough consistency of chemical makeup to be able to sell them to an interested party. Uh, however, that will almost certainly change at pilot manufacturing scale um, when we could think about taking on the overhead costs associated with that uh, continuous sale to, to sell it to interested parties uh, who could then reconstitute it for um, the uh, base chemical inputs. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, uh, at this point, um, unless there's anybody else, I would uh, entertain a motion uh, to close the public hearing. So moved. David Potter. Okay, so the public hearing has been closed. Um, we have to vote on that. Uh, Dave Sharp. Yes. All right. Dave on Zoom. David Potter. Yes. Gabby on Zoom. Gabby Richard Harrington. Yes. Laura, Zoom. Laura Pandani. Yes. Okay. Adam, myself, yes. So your public hearing's closed. We talked about the conditions. Um, board members, uh, do you have anything else uh, you want to talk amongst ourselves? Uh, anything else you want uh, us to bring up here? Now uh, we're deliberating on this or if someone wants to make a motion or 
I could make a motion if we want to. Uh, go ahead, Dave. Yeah, Adam, I just, uh, I thought the presentation was great and there was written materials that um, spoke to our uh, sort of bullet list of, of um, you know, standards that we, we need to consider. I didn't know if it was worth our time to just run down that list or ask if everybody's kind of reviewed that and if we're all kind of set with, um, you know, how they meet the the need for um, discussing economic impact and that type of thing, you know, traffic and resources. Yeah, I mean, I'm open to going through them uh, line by line if the board members want. I personally did review it in advance. I appreciate the applicant's uh, thoroughness and providing it in an easy to read um, format to work through it and and uh, in in advance. But I'm I'm happy to go through that uh, if if anybody would like. I would I would um, second your um, opinion that it was very well presented, very clear, very appreciated. I don't have any concerns. I just wanted to make sure that we uh, touch base. That's that's basically our charge, right? Just to 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 meet those needs and say that within that uh, those parameters, we're all set. Correct. So based on the applicant's um, application um, for the special permit and for the variance, um, we would have to make a finding of fact here that. The applicant's presentation meets um, the bylaw in order for us to grant uh, what they requested. Um, and I feel as though they did. And um, I don't know. I've, um, this is part of the public record. Um, if you want a copy of it after you can, it is, it should be, um, but there's an extra packet right over there if you want it. The press is here. So, um, I would say that um, I would, it's up, it's up to members of the board. I can go through and, and read them out if we want it as a matter of record, or we can vote the application as presented with this packet as the record um, that we agree with it as it was presented. And then we just add when um, the administrative staff at town hall writes up the permit, they just have to add the conditions of the permit um, onto it. And you want an answer about whether we're good with that or not? Yes. Would you like me to go read through the application or make a motion to grant the application as presented? I make a motion to accept the proposal as presented. Okay. And that was made by Gabby Richard Harrington. Yeah. And if we have a second, then we can add the conditions in. Second. Second by David Sharp. I and second that. Okay. Okay, and Third. all right. So, based on the motion presented, I would like to add that the applicant provides contact information 24 hours a day, 365 for the town hall and for the fire department. Um, that the applicant uh, allows for a fire department uh, inspection uh, with a hazmat tech um, at the discretion of the fire chief. Um, and if training is needed, specialized training for their department specifically to what you're doing there or a training is needed that, that will be provided, that the applicant per, uh, is in compliance with all local, state, and federal regulations, that this permit is granted to phase one only, and the applicant would come back to us for any phase two or manufacturing um, that would happen as he spoke to and as, as outlined in the packet. And that this uh, permit uh, is not transferable to another ownership group. It's only um, issued to um, the presenter here. And I have a second on those. Yeah, just yeah, just to add to it, just that and maybe it was part of the inspections, but just there was that safety plan too. Just that they abide by any safety plan. That abide by any safety plan. Related to their hazardous materials, yeah. Okay, so uh, we'll add that in when it's written. So uh, if we could have those conditions seconded, that would be great. That's yeah, seconded. David. Oh, go ahead. David That's Potter right. seconded. Okay. David. Either way. Okay. Uh, I'll take a roll call vote, <clears throat> starting with Dave in here. Dave Sharp, aye. For the special permit application. 
Yes. Okay. Dave on the screen. David Potter. Uh, yes. Gabby Richard. Harrington. Gabby Richard Harrington. Yes. Laura. Laura Pantani. Yes. Okay. And Adam Sokolowski. Yes. So um, I will also uh, make a motion um, if the board members would like uh, to approve uh, me to review the as it, after it's written and sign the permit. Um, or if the board members would like, we can do that at the next meeting on the 7th. With the permission of the board, I could sign it administratively. If not, I will sign it um, at the next meeting. I would move that you sign it administratively, just in case second. This meeting doesn't happen on those items. And to get the Happy Richard Harrington second. Okay. All those in favor, Dave here. Dave Sharp, aye. Okay. Dave Potter. David Potter, yes. Okay. Gabby. Gabby Richard Harrington, yes. Okay, Laura. Laura. Okay, and I'll abstain. Uh, so you're all set. Uh, the amazing administrative staff in the building inspector's office that helps us out will reach out to you when they have it all drafted and then I look at it and sign it and then just make sure you follow their instructions on how you have to have it recorded and then there's an appeal period and then after the appeal period you come back to the town hall again and have the town clerk do what they do with it so some people I just want to be make sure that when you get if you get the sign permit in hand it's not necessarily the end of the road for you yeah uh, yeah, thanks, Adam. I, I always give out instructions with the uh, permit, how it has to be recorded, and uh, we make sure it gets stamped and, um, after the appeals period. So I think uh, we should be good. Alex, a final question. Are you hiring for the research phase? Or is it just the three of you? Uh, we actually just hired our uh, our last person for the, the research phase at this time. Is there a way to involve our local Frontier High School students or any college students that live in town that are interested? We are currently looking for fall, spring, and summer interns. Thank you for that question. Excellent. Thank you. Sorry, that's the teacher in me asking. Okay. Uh, I don't see any mail here for old business. Uh, does anything, anybody have anything not reasonably anticipated? Any questions, comments, or concerns? Okay, I think Amy sent out possibly our next meeting. Amy is going to be September 7th. Uh, yeah, that's I'm expecting um, an application from Pelican. They want to put up an oversized sign, I think, on their building. And uh, they did not get that application in on time to be heard at this meeting. Okay. Um, do you feel as though there's going to be time to get that duly posted in the paper since you don't have it yet? Or are we going to need to pick a date later in the month of September? Yeah, you know, they actually, they they had the application and they sent it to the wrong email address. So the application is uh, written, it, it should be ready to go. As long as uh, you guys have a quorum for the seventh, I've heard back from, I think, um, one person who wasn't sure. So I just wanna make sure um, we're gonna have a quorum. Do people know their availability for September 7th? Are all of us required? Is is there any um you know for quorum? Because I'm I'm still not quite sure. I'd rather but, not um, commit. I mean, if it's there are only five of you now, so I think if three of you can make it, that's a quorum. We gotta have four to vote on anything. Oh, do you? Okay, four. So um, I can be there if it's gonna make the quorum. I'm still coaching the Frontier Youth Field Hockey Team, and we would be on the field at that point if well, if I didn't have to be at a meeting. Do you want to go later? Um, I would love to go later. I mean, I could do it at seven thirty or eight, probably easier. 
I mean, but, um, I know, will be that, there if it makes a quorum. If if seven thirty works better to get a quorum, um, then we can do that. I mean, it's a sign. It's pretty straightforward. Happy to do that. And, unless are you anticipating any other business that night, Amy? No, I haven't heard from anyone else. But if, if we if we can push the meeting time back to seven thirty to help Gabby out with the field hockey coaching, that's fine with me. Okay. So, Thank Laura, you. would you be available for that? Um. Yes, I believe so. I do something on Thursday evening, starting at seven, typically. So I'm not sure if that'll be the first one. Um, so I just was wanted to look into that, but um, I'm sure I could make it. Okay. Yeah, folks just want to, you know, if, if you need to check things, but just uh, please be sure to get back to me. So uh, if we need to make it a different date, uh, we'll do that. Okay. I'll look into it this week. Thank you. And historically, Laura, Thursday nights is the, when the town hall is available for zoning. We've yes, I I have the ability to um, go at night, um, but if it's the first one, I'd like not to miss it. Okay, no problem. I just wanted to let you know because that would be the town, hall has a, the town hall has a system on what nights they allow which groups to meet. So. All right. Great. Thank I'll you. For take that. a motion to uh, adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Seconded. Second, David Potter. Okay. All those in favor? Dave Sharp, aye. David okay. Potter, aye. Have a Gabby Richard Harrington, aye. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks. Right. Thanks, Adam. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. Okay.